UFOs, the CIA, and the Robertson Panel. On December 2, 1952, the CIA Assistant Director H. Marshall Cadwell noted that in a classified report on UFO activity in American airspace, quote, sightings of unexplained objects at great altitudes and traveling at high speeds in the vicinity of major U.S. defense installations are of such nature that they are not attributable to natural phenomena or known types of aerial vehicles, end quote. So they were flying over base installations from that time. Believing that something really might be afoot in the skies of America, Chadwell prepared a list of saucer-themed recommendations for the National Security Council. Quote, the Director of Central Intelligence shall formulate and carry out a program of intelligence and research activities as required to solve the problem of instant positive identification of unidentified flying objects, UFOs that is. Upon call of the Director of Central Intelligence, government departments and agencies shall provide assistance in this program of intelligence and research to the extent of their capacity provided, however, that the DCI shall avoid duplication of activities presently directed towards the solution of this problem. This effort shall be coordinated with the military services and the Research and Development Board of the Department of Defense, with the Psychological Board and other government agencies as appropriate. The Director of Central Intelligence should disseminate information concerning the program of intelligence and research activities in this field to the various departments and agencies which have authorized interest in that, therein." End quote. 48 hours later, the Intelligence Advisor Committee concurred with Chadwell and recommended that, quote, the services of selected scientists to review and appraise the available evidence in the light of pertinent scientific theories, end quote, should be the order of the day. Thus was born what became known as the Robertson Panel, so named after the man chosen to head the inquiry, Howard Percy Robertson. I kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Howard Percy Robertson was the consultant to the agency. He was a renowned physicist and the director of the Defense Department's Weapons Evaluation Group. Chadwell was tasked with putting together a crack team of experts in various science, in te technical, intelligence, and military disciplines, and have them carefully study the data on flying saucers, currently held by not just the CIA, but the Air Force too, who obligingly agreed to hand over all their UFO files for the CIA scrutiny, or at least the Air Force said it was all they had. Whatever the truth of the matter regarding the extent to which the U.S. Air Force shared its files with Chadwell's team, the fact that there was a significant body of data to work with was the main thing. And so the team, which included Louis Alvarez, physicist, radar expert, and later a Nobel Prize recipient, Frederick C. Durant, CIA officer, secretary to the panel and missile expert, Samuel Abraham Goodsmith, Brookhaven National Laboratory's nuclear physicist, and Thornton Page, astrophysicist, radar expert, and deputy director of Johns Hopkins Operations Research Office, quickly got to work. The overall conclusion of the Robertson panel was that while UFOs per se did not appear to have a bearing on national security or the defense of the United States, the way in which the subject could be used by potentially hostile nations to manipulate the public mindset and disrupt the U.S. military infrastructure did have a bearing, and a major one too, on matters of security nature. According to the panel's members, although evidence of any direct threat from these sightings was wholly lacking, related dangers might well exist resulting from a. misidentification of actual enemy artifacts by defense personnel, b. overloading of emergency reporting channels with false information, C, subjectively, uh, subjectivity of public to mass hysteria and greater vulnerability to possible enemy psychological warfare.
There was also a recommendation that a number of the public UFO investigative groups that existed in the United States at the time, such as the Civilian Flying Saucer Investigators, CFSI, and the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, APRO, should be watched carefully due to the apparent irresponsibility and the possible use of such groups for subversive purposes. The panel also concluded that a public education campaign should be undertaken on matters relative to UFOs. Specifically agreed the numbers the members, such as a program, would result in a reduction in public interest in flying saucers, which today evokes a strong psychological reaction. This education could be accomplished by mass media, such as television, motion pictures, and popular articles. Basis of such education would be actual case histories, which has been puzzling at first, but later explained. As in the case of conjuring tricks, there is much less stimulation if the secret is known. Such a program should tend to reduce the current gullibility of the public and consequently their susceptibility to clever hostile propaganda. Quote, in this connection, Dr. Hadley Cantrell, Princeton University, was suggested. Cantrell authored The Invasion of Mars, a study in the psychology of panic, written about the famous Orson Welles radio broadcast in 1938, and has since performed advanced laboratory studies in the field of perception. The name of Don Marquis, University of Michigan, and Leo Rostin were mentioned as possible suitable, possibly suitable as consultant psychologists. Also someone familiar with mass communication techniques, perhaps an advertising expert would be helpful. Arthur Godfrey was mentioned as possibly a, a valuable channel of communication research, a mass audience of certain levels. Dr. Berkner suggested the U.S. Navy ONR Special Devices Center, Sands Point, Long Island, as a potentially vi valuable organization to assist in such an educational program. The teaching techniques used by the agency for aircraft identification during the past war were cited as the sample of a similar educational task. The Jam Handy Company, which made World War II training films, motion picture and slide strips was also suggested as well as, as Walt Disney Inc. animated cartoons, end quote. Robbie Graham, a UFO researcher who has carefully studied the many and varied intricacies of the Robertson panel and is linked to Disney and the man named Ward Kimball says, the panels singled out of Disney made sense given the animation giants then firmly established working relationship with the U.S. government. During World War II, Disney made numerous propaganda shorts for the U.S. military, and in the 1950s, corporate and government sponsors helped the company produce films promoting President Eisenhower's Adams for Peace policy, as well as the retrospectively hilarious Duck and Cover documentary, which depicted schoolchildren surviving an atomic attack by sheltering under their desks, end quote. Graham continued, that the Robinson panel highlighted Disney is significant in that the panel's general recommendation to debunk UFOs through media channels is known to have been acted upon in at least one instance. This being the CBS TV broadcast of UFOs, Friend, Foe, or, or Fantasy in 1966, an anti-UFO documentary narrated by Walter Cronkite in a letter addressed to former Robertson panel secretary Frederick C. Durant, Dr. Thornton Page confided that he, quote, helped organize a CBS TV show around the Robertson panel conclusions, end quote, even though this was 13 years after the panel had first convened. In light of this case alone, it seems reasonable to assume that the government may at least have attempted to follow through on the Robertson panel's Disney recommendation, end quote. As for Ward Kimball, in 1979, he went public on certain aspects of Disney's links to the UFO conundrum and officialdom and uh, stated that it was not just the CIA that Disney was working with when it came to UFOs. At some point during 1955 or 56, Disney was contacted by representatives of the U.S. Air Force and was asked to secretly cooperate on a documentary about the UFO controversy. As part of the deal, the Air Force offered to supply actual UFO footage 
which Disney was told they could include in their film. According to Kimball, at that time, it was not at all unusual for either Walt Disney or his studio to go along with the government's wishes, or perhaps demands might be a far more accurate term to use. Kimball revealed how, during the Second World War, the military practically took over Disney's Burbank facilities, where dozens of hours of military training productions and war effort films featured Disney characters like Donald Duck were made. The studio began work on the requested UFO documentary and animators were asked to imagine what an alien would look like. Meanwhile, Walt Disney himself eagerly waited for the Air Force to deliver the promised film of actual UFOs. At the last moment, however, the Air Force mysteriously withdrew that offer of footage and the planned documentary was eventually cancelled. This is by Nick Redfern, Mysterious Universe on Bended Reality. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.